I love making virtual machines. Virtual machines are something I really, really enjoy making. And in today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make a virtual machine. Now, for me, making a virtual machine, there's different things that allow you to do them. There's certain emulators, there's certain software that allows you to do it, and all kinds of things. So, I'm using a server, which is running an Intel Xeon, and it has 64 gigs of RAM and an SSD in it. And then I'm uh, running Proxmox on it, and then this houses four operating systems. It houses my web server, it houses my network monitor, and holds other two op operating systems for testing purposes, which are Windows 10 and Windows 8. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows 7 using Proxmox. Proxmox is an open sourced virtualization piece of software that runs on hardware and then you manage it from your computer. So it's pretty much, it's where you have a computer that sits in the closet, you don't touch that, you touch it all from the web. So today, installing Windows through virtualization is really, really easy, and hopefully in today's episode it should be really quick, and that's what we intend to do. So for instance, I'm just going to go back to English Australia, click Next, and Install Now. So this is running completely on a separate machine, it's not running on this desktop, it's running on a system. Uh, as you can see here, this is completely um, running as a data on a data center machine, running Proxmox 4.41, and I just don't want to break it or touch it, so I just leave that virtual machine as it is. Beautiful. Okay, next job. We're going to click. Let's do professional uh, 64-bit. No, let's do professional x86. Now, the reason I like doing x86 is more the fact that it will put less stress on the CPU, as I've discovered, uh, depending on what CPU you have. But seems I'm running an Intel Xeon, it, for me, I feel more comfortable running an x86 mach um, machine, uh, just to a few compatibility problems um, and a, a few things like that. So let's click Next. Now we're just going to accept the license terms, click Next, Custom, Cool, Drive Options, New, Apply. So it's pretty much like what you're doing with installing Windows 10 on a real machine. It's just doing it virtually. So this is not on a f physical piece of... Um, hardware, well actually technically it is, but um, the actual virtual machine itself, Windows 7, is running under a uh, cluster called um, KVM, which is then running this. So Proxmox is completely Linux based, and Linux is actually open sourced, so this is also open sourced. Um, as well as that, later on during this series of virtualization, we will be looking into Zen Server, uh, which is also a great piece of open source software by Citrix, um, and you can do the exact same thing as Proxmox, or it, although it does have a few other extra features that are really good. So now we're letting Windows install, and we're going to come back once that's finished. Okay, we are back. As you can see, Windows 7 has just booted up, and we are ready to start the installation. So it's pretty much like you're installing Windows on a normal computer. The only difference is, it's virtually done. Now we just got to wait for it to finish the installation. Here we go, rebooting. Let's see how quick this thing takes to boot. And I'm not slowing anything down, so... Jeez, already this has taken like 15 minutes. And as we can see, Windows is just preparing itself, and then we can finally get on with the installation. Hurrah! It is finally finished! So I'm just going to do the normal nitty gritty stuff by putting... Oh damn, okay, we'll have to do ML TCM. And we'll call this, uh, yeah, we'll just call it MLTTM PC. This is if you wanted to change it, so someone on the network will, um, any computer on the network will see that. Alright, we don't have to put a password in if we don't want to. Now, this is an important thing. If you want to use Windows as a virtual machine for a task, i.e. running it as a server, virtual server, you need to have a product key. If you were testing it for legitimate purposes, 
then you're fine to click skip. You have a 30 day trial before it will then ask you to activate it. So I'll click skip. Now, this is important. When using Windows 7, it says to use recommended settings, but read it and help Microsoft improve Windows. I like to use important updates only. As if you're sending information to Microsoft, it can slow your internet connection down. It can slow um, your PC down and can run a lot of things in the background without you knowing. So let's check our time. Okay, Windows 7 has finally installed. So it's now time that we install, uh, not install, sorry. Yes, it's important that we install drivers to get the system properly finished. So preparing a desktop and stuff like that. Then we have the Vert IO um, driver that I put into Proxmox. So obviously options, sorry, hardware, and then going into downloading the Vert IO, which you can find um, from the website uh, Vert IO drivers. If you look that up somehow, it should come up with Fedora. If that's not the case, and I will provide a link in the description below. Now we just gotta wait for it to connect. And as you can see, we're finally connected. Let's just change the screen resolution because that looks awful because it's like 800 by 600. And yes, hallelujah. As you can see, the, the standard VGA adapter automatically installs drivers. So I can go all the way up to 1080p. Now I'm using a 1366 by 720 something monitor. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use the highest I can get to, probably about that, and click apply. Perfect. We'll click keep changes. Actually, no, that's that's rubbish. Um, let's do this one. Click apply. Keep changes. Now I think that's it. Mm, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. Uh, let's go. Yes, that's better. Okay, that will that will do. All right. Now, as you can see, can you guys see here how how my cursor and the virtual cursor are in different areas? You've got to be aware of that with Proxmox. So just be mindful of that, that you might not be able to click things. And it can be a pain in the neck sometimes. So the way you get around that is literally just have it, uh, this, have your um, tasks um, logged down and then you should be fine. And then you can just simply leave it like that and not go into full screen. Installing drivers is very easy once again. We just go into, um, we go in guest agent and then we go to QEM. And this will allow the guest agent to properly work with Windows, because as you can see, can you see how there's no Ethernet? Oh dear, that's tragic. So what we can do is we can install this, and then that should hopefully allow in Ethernet drivers on this machine. I'm just going into the device manager as well to just check the Ethernet controller is correct. Um, there is a little walk around how you fix it. So as you can see, we just need to go to update driver software, browse my computer, Go to the Vert.io storage, so we just click on the actual DVD drive itself, and it should find it and install it. As you can see, it's found it. We're going to click Always Trust Red Hat Inc. Install, and that will install the driver so we can have Ethernet running and have it connected to the internet and our local network. Hey, there we go. We now have Ethernet running on this machine. Next thing I'd like to do is also update the PCIe device. Do the same thing. And there we have it. All drivers are detected. We're going to click home network because this is on a home network. Duh. If you don't feel happy with having your computer on the network and being able to be logged in remotely, you can click work group or work network. This will allow computers on the network to not see your computer or virtual machine in this case. Now, it will also ask you to create a home group. You don't have to do this, you can just click cancel. And I do that because it stuffs around with our network and stuff like that, so better to not do that. Finally, we're gonna restart the virtual machine. Ah, stupid thing. And unfortunately, we can't do that, so we're gonna just have to do it manually by doing this, restart. And the reason we restart the virtual machine is so all the drivers are refreshed, the screen resolution is refreshed, 
everything like that. It's just a little bit of a helpful feature. Then after that, we do want to do one more check. Ah oh dear. All right, here we go. The system has fully rebooted, and because it doesn't have a password, it will log in automatically. And there you have it. The virtual machine is officially complete. You have now created a virtual machine using Proxmox VE 4.41. In my next tutorial, I will be showing you how to do it on your desktop using VMware Workstation Player, Workstation Pro, VirtualBox, and also Hyper-V. Please leave a like rating if you're excited to watch that. Till next time, guys. See you soon. Bye.